Hi everyone, welcome back to Beyond Your Knowledge. Today we're going to be studying uh, a topic which is very important, and and it is um, it's called hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. Well, so before we continue, I would like to share with you Second Peter three nine and says that the Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Amen. Well, with that in mind, so we can move to hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So what what are the organs or that are involved in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis? Well, I'm going to show you a picture here. So, how this happened, okay? So, everything is start with your brain, in your brain, okay? So, in your brain, which we're going to, in your brain, we have few structures. I mean, several structures, sorry. But the one that is responsible for the hypothalamic pituitary uh, adrenal cortex, so basically it's a hypothalamic, is the hypothalamus, pituitary is pituitary. The pituitary is divided in anterior and posterior. But right now we're going to focus in anterior. And this one, the hypothalamus, it is in the brain, and the anterior pituitary gland is in the brain as well. Well, what are the hormones that come from the hypothalamus? Something that you should remember in hypothalamus, usually all the hormones that come from the hypothalamus has the word R for release, okay? So, but in this case, we're going to focus just in one um, hormone, which is the corticotropin releasing hormone. It's released in the hypothalamus. But where does corticotropin release hormone goes? So this one goes to your anterior pituitary gland. So come from the hypothalamus, to your anterior pituitary gland and then the anterior pituitary gland one time received the signal from the CRH is going to secrete another hormone and this is called the adrenocorticotropic hormone abbreviated ACTH and if you see adrenal so come from or adrenal so that means that go to where yes you are right adrenal now the adrenocorticotropic hormone which go to your adrenal the adrenal gland which is something like this so has uh, so has the that the cortex okay and also has the medulla now the the cortex it has three layers and it's important to remember so some aglomerulora fasciculara and reticularis okay so other people just use the mnemonic gfr but don't get confused with the gfr which is in your kidney okay the your glomerular filtration rate now don't get confused with that so in this case because we're talking about the cortex of the medulla so it's on aglomerulosa the zona fasciculara and the zona reticularis okay so each of those is going to secrete different hormones so um the we, we're going to be talking um eventually okay well i think now let me just come back to the cortex the adrenal cortex release cortisol okay but yeah now we're going to mention all the others so cortisol come from the zona fasciculara, okay? Now, the zona glomerulosa is responsible for salts, okay? So we say salt, fasciculara is sugar, and then reticular is going to be sex. Those are the hormones involved in those three layers, okay? Now, but the one that we're going to focus is in the one that is responsible for the sugar which is called cortisol okay so well um i think that could be a good idea if we just um review so the salts it is basically the mineral corticoids responsible for that okay 
and then the sugar which we already mentioned which is uh, cortisol and then the other one in the zona reticularis which is the sex so in the one it is going to be the um yeah should be androgens yeah so it is the androgens here whoa I hope that you can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just follow the uh, just follow the arrows, okay? So you're going to be androgens. Okay. So basically, those are from outside or from the outer layer to the inner. Not counting the medulla, just in the cortex. We have you know corticoids, which is going to increase your sodium, and then sodium is related with salt. Cortisol, which is going to increase your level of glucose, which is sugar and uh, androgens which is going to increase your level of the sex hormones okay and so basically is that but with this uh, hypothalamic criteria you know so i mean including the just the cortex which we're going to focus right now and uh, now, uh, now i think that would be good to give some example if there is a suppression of the of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal cortex or i'm going to abbreviate it hpa as we saw here okay so this what about if there is a suppression of the hypothalamic so um let's see what i um yeah so so if there is a suppression of this uh, hpa which is ph is um hypothalamic the tarry adrenal and then axis okay because they communicate each other so now before we continue I would like just to to con um, yeah if something is we have three three step here so step one uh, I mean three places two and three okay so let's just say this is the hypothalamus the pituitary gland and this is the adrenal cortex well if that is something that if something is low here so you're going to have a negative you're going to have a feedback here or here to say that you need more so basically they need to have a communication between each other all the time and if something is missing so from the bottom so the other is going to be high that those works with the missing here in, in, in the bottom one okay now if you see that the patient has all those lows so that's mean if all those are gone so that means the patient has a suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary axis now this is that we're going to target a little bit more so how does could happen that could happen a suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary axis if the patient is taking glucocorticoids medication okay so glucocorticoid so what kind of ex uh, example of the glucocorticoid therapy so if the patient is taking for example a prednisone so which kind of patient we can give prednisone so for example the patient that has systemic lupus erythematose okay so remember that systemic lupus erythematose is aff affect the kidneys and they die of kidney failure okay so almost all the diseases die of 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 heart failure so the heart fail but in this uh, in this case so it's one of those basically um not that common which is the method of the of the kidney failure well let's just talk a little bit more about the glucocorticoids so the glucocorticoids suppress the synthesis and the release of corticotropin release hormone from the where from the hypothalamus so that's mean that the glucocorticoids go to work basically there and the hypothalamus and then they are going to suppress okay the, but they're going to suppress the synthesis and also they're going to suppress the release so two two things are affected so the synthesis and the other one is the release okay so that's mean that you cannot make it so you cannot synthesize and you cannot release so that cannot come out okay to the place that you go well now um this uh, the suppression of the synthesis uh, of 
although of, because hap that's happening in the hypothalamus so remember the hypothalamus release which kind of hormone yes you are right so corticotropin release hormone okay now this one blocks uh, on the adrenocorticotropic uh, hormone stimulatory effect on the anterior pituitary gland now if the patient so and then you block your ACTH because the release from the corticotropic hormone stimulate the ACTH but now it's not working because the RH is suppressed okay now if the patient is taking uh, if that is a suppression of the of the long-term suppression so leads to atrophy so let me just give you an, a classic example so if you are doing exercise for example i'm going to put this in green because it's an example also it's a good idea to keep in mind the importance another importance of exercise so if i don't use my muscles my muscles become atrophy okay atrophic sorry so become a atrophic now that's happening the same so sorry about that so um, that happens the same if you are using uh, um, corticosteroids, okay? Let's just do this in blue better now. So if you're using corticosteroids, the corticosteroids is going to cause a traffic, but the, we're not talking about the, the muscles. So we're talking about of the... So we're talking about of the um, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal... Um, axis okay so which is uh, uh, a, a traffic okay so the the suppression of this uh, hypothalamic um, adrenal axis so yeah it is the two long term of suppression I mean long term of use of the glucocorticoids and yeah so what what do you think is going to be um suppressed so it is easy it's going to be your hypothalamus which release which kind of hormone crh and the pituitary which kind of hormone is going to be acth and then the adrenal so depend on the zone so we have how many zones so we have three zones so some glomerulosa fascicular and reticularis okay so and then as we mentioned here so that was here, yeah, here, here. So the mineralocorticoids, the cortisol, and the androgens. Okay. So, but basically, the one when you are suppressed, this one, so it's affect, affect cortisol. ACTH become and CRH okay so because CRH go to ACTH and ACTH go to cortisol okay so now then uh, yeah so basically yeah so that's happen uh, affect those so um, those uh, neurons should be affected and then the, the pituitary corticotropic cells and in the zona reticularis so the androgen producing which is in the inner zone and the zona fasciculara which I mentioned here which is the one this is the middle zone and is responsible for the cortisol now the chronic when you have a when you have a chronic glucocortico use characterized by makes sense low CRH low ACTH and the levels of cortisol cannot go up so when the patient is in a stress situation example if the patient has an any infection or if the patient has um, uh, any surgery so all those are stressful situations so those are stressful situation so normal in the patient that doesn't have a suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary um, adrenal uh, axis so in the patient that doesn't have any suppression of this one of this hpa axis 
so all the cortisol should go up but since this patient for example that is taking prednisone or is taking um, glucocorticoids I mean cortico corti corticosteroids sorry or is taking corticosteroids so those patient yes so they can they can get suppression of the cortisol and the cortisol is responsible to help you when you are in, in infection or when you have a surgery those are some examples could be another situations and now if you have recent infection so it's you, you know all the consequences that the patient can has and um, yeah so the patient even can get a sepsis in the feet um, the worst of the cases but yeah so infection um now the lack of stress response can, uh, can result in a relative glucocorticoid deficiency even uh, if we maintain the regimen of glucocorticoids so because those glucocorticoids help to maintain the vascular tone as well so do you see another thing that those glucocorticoids can help for the vascular tone okay now the vascular tone increasing your norepinephrine uranine and your angiotensin vasoconstrictive activity okay all those now the glucocort this is this is the the when when the 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 glucocorticoids in their normal function one of the normal things that they do they are going to increase i'm going to say it again your norepinephrine okay they're going to increase your uranium and now it makes sense that then your angiotensin uh then your angiotensin vasoconstrictive activity okay will be increased as well so that's mean that the patient is going to have more vasoconstriction because vasoconstrictive due to angiotensin activity okay now what about if the patient has a deficit of the glucocorticoid so in the deficit of the glucocorticoid now if makes sense so let's just put the opposite if you see a patient which is normal is going to cause vasoconstriction which is going to keep a good levels of pressure it's going to increase your running and your inner pronephrine what about if you have a deficit of the glucocorticoid so how do you think that the patient is going to present yes so you're right hypotension sorry hypotension or in one of the worst cases shock okay now all those things can happen now in cases just like this if, if a higher um, stress dose is needed uh, we need it to compensate the increase physiologic demands and prevent the development of the adrenal crisis so that's mean that yeah if we give super <laughs> Uh, or a higher um, stress dose yeah we can avoid um, things just like this um, so let's just yeah now so I think that basically this is uh, very important just to remember um, don't give to the patient drugs that they don't need okay and remember that we need to track the drugs of our patients and and their side effects etc okay well thank you so much for watching and Remember that we can do all things through Christ and us. God bless you.